This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial, and let's continue our talk on transcoding. Now, you'll remember in the last lesson, we dealt with what I like to call the under the hood parameters that come along with any clip that you AMA link to, or now, as you know, as version 8.4 comes along, just link to inside of your Media Composer project. In this lesson, what I want to do is I just want to talk about general transcoding workflows for HD. We're not going to talk about the larger than HD yet. I'm going to save that for the next lesson because there's enough to talk about specifically for just getting footage in, whether this is from a DSLR, whether this is from, you know, any type of camera you may have shot with. Transcoding is really how you're going to be working with this footage. And in this lesson, like I said, I want to cement that workflow for you so that every time you work with AMA or just link to media, you're never going to run into an issue. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And let's open the bin we're gonna be working with here. And of course, before we move on, it is important for me to point out that this is a 23976 frame per second project. That's gonna become relevant in just a little bit because what we're gonna do is we're gonna import a 1080i clip and a 23976 p clip. Now you'll remember that I always talk about when it comes to actually selecting your project type, really that's only relevant for when you're done and you're ready to export this file to a specific format. As far as you know, working with different file sizes, different you know, frame rates inside of one timeline, that's no problem. You can do all that inside of Media Composer. Okay, but let's bring in our two clips. What I'm gonna do, simply right click, I'm going to come down to, of course, link to media now inside of version 8.4. And I'm going to select one of my elephant clips here first that is 1080i. I'll just pick this clip here. I'm simply going to say open. And here's the clip. You'll see I can just grab it, drag down. Very nice. There are some elephants. You know what I think I'm going to do just for kicks is I'm just going to AMA link to these other two clips here just because later on I want to show you a little bit of a different technique when it comes to transcoding that's going to be sort of at your disposal if you choose to work that way. Okay. So next thing I'm going to do is simply right click again, AMA link to, I'm just going to step up a level here and I'm going to come to my basketball footage. And let's make sure that I switch the files or type here to auto detect and I'll just pick, I'll just pick three of them here. It doesn't even really matter. I'll just select those three and there we go. Okay. Now what I always like to do is I like to come up with a different view for my AMA link to media. Now you'll see down here if I switch my bin view to be link to, I'll just stretch this over a little bit here you'll see that what's important for me is that the uh, frames per second and the raster dimension is shown. You'll see the source file name, there we go, where it's coming from and where it's exactly located on my hard drive. So that's something for me that's very important and I always recommend to people that they set up a bin view specifically for that. You can obviously set up all your other different bin views as well, but I find this one just to be a very useful one, especially if you do a lot of AMA linking too. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about transcoding. And what we'll do is I'm just gonna bring this back. I'm just gonna switch my view back to my Eclipse view. There we go, very nice. And most people, and this is, I'll say sort of a topic of debate. What is the best way to do things? Should you bring all your footage in, transcode it, and then work with it? Should you aim a link to your footage, start editing with it, and transcode it at the end? To be honest, the, you know, the choice is inevitably up to you. Here's my personal opinion on things. I'm always of the opinion that AMA was always put in there to get media into Media Composer that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to work with natively, like larger than HD clips. So for me, I always tell you know new editors to the game, always come in and transcode all your media first. Best part is, is that you know as of version 8, you can now transcode in the background if you wanted to. So basically, transcode stuff in the background and keep working while you're waiting for that footage to populate inside of Media Composer. Okay, so let me show you the two methods to transcode. And again, we're just talking about HD right now. We're not talking about anything larger than HD. I'm gonna handle that in the next lesson. So let's just come here and let's just pick one of the clips. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a like frame rate clip to the, to the uh, project that I'm working with, 23976 right here. 
and I'm simply going to right click on this clip and I'm going to come down to consolidate transcode. Now you'll see that by default consolidate is chosen, but I'm just going to switch that over to transcode. Now let's start simple, shall we? Okay. The simplest thing right here is the target drive. Where is this clip going to? Well, right now we're going to have video and audio on the same drive, even though I only have video on this clip. And then I can pick the drive it's going to go to. Now next we have the option to transcode only link to media, which is actually kind of handy because what you, if you had a, you know, a bin, let's just say had a bunch of clips that were already transcoded and intermixed in there was all of your AMA link to media, or your link to media, you could basically just tell Media Composer to transcode only the linked media. Now next we're going to get into raster dimensions. Now I'm actually going to skip over this because we're going to talk more about this in the next lesson. I'm also going to skip over the convert to project frame rate for just one second. You'll see where I'm going with this in just a second. Next we have the target video resolution, which for the purposes of what we're doing, in most cases I'll select DNX HD 175, but of course that's a personal preference. We're going to assume for argument's sake that I've already, you know, done all the frame flexing and, you know, color adapters and things that I want to do. So I'm just going to bake them into the transcode. I can convert the sample rate and the audio bit depth if I wanted to. But right now all I'm going to do is simply say transcode. Now, of course, I could run this in the background if I wanted to. But I'm just simply going to say transcode. And in a matter of seconds, there's my clip ready to go. Okay, now I'm just going to delete that clip. Because we do have another option in here when it comes to transcoding. I'm just going to pick one of these elephant clips that's at a different frame rate as my timeline. Now what I should also do here is just for kicks, let's call up the choose column and I'm just going to select frames per second as well because we had a bit of a problem in previous versions of Media Composer before version 8. What would happen is people would AMA link to clips. I can call it AMA link to because back then it was AMA linking to. They would AMA link to clips that were of multiple frame rates. And what they would do is they would go in and transcode those clips. And the problem they ran into was that when they transcoded it, that clip was then converted to the frame rate of the project. Now, where did that become a problem? Well, it became a problem if you're working larger than HD, because what would happen is you would transcode your media, let's say it was you know 24 frames into a 30 frame per second project. As soon as you did that, it baked that clip to be 30 frames per second. Now when I say bake, I basically mean it forced that clip to be 30 frames per second. Well, what happens if you wanted to go back and relink to that clip, the native clip on your hard drive? Well, Media Composer couldn't do it because of course, the frame rates were different. Well, now what we have the ability to do is to simply right click and come to Consolidate Transcode. Obviously everything else here is the same except for the fact that I can now choose to keep the sources frame rate. You'll see very cool. Now the target resolution changes. Now because we're talking about, you know, necessarily a frame rate that Media Composer doesn't know right off the bat, we're actually given our DNX HR and Apple ProRes codecs. Now that's of course because I'm on a Mac for us to choose from. Now in most cases I'd probably choose high quality if I'm transcoding this for air and I would simply then come down and say transcode. And let's see what actually happens here when I transcode this clip. We'll give it a second here to transcode and when it's done that new clip should be 29.97 frames per second and that original clip that I did was of course 23.98 frames per second. Okay, so I mean basically at its core that's transcoding, but let me give you sort of an alternate situation, okay? So here's the situation. Now, I, we'll just assume for argument's sake that you've sort of gone against my advice and what you've decided to do is you've decided to create a little sequence. So let's do that. I'm just going to take the elephants here. I'm just going to delete these other two clips here because I don't really need them for the purposes of what we're doing. And we're just going to say for argument's sake that we've taken these elephant clips and we've created ourselves a little timeline with them. Okay. And we're basically, and it's going to be really the most basic sequence you've ever seen here. Nothing too fancy. Okay. Now, of course, because these clips are AMA linked to, you'll see that I actually have the uh, clip identifier here telling me that these clips have a temporal change being done to them. Temporal meaning that the frame rate is being converted from 29.97 frames per second to 23.98 frames per second. And let's just get our last clip in here. Now, of course, I should probably point out that if you don't want to see that and you want to switch things back to the way they were pre-version 8.4 Media Composer without these sort of little uh, markers on your timeline, what we can do is just come down to the fast menu. I'm going to come up to show adapters and I'm just going to say don't show me any of them and we can just get rid of them so that things look the way that they did, like I said, in pre-version 8.4 of Media Composer. Okay, but we've got this timeline now, three clips in it, and we want to transcode this sequence 
not necessarily the individual clips, but the whole sequence in general. Now, of course, you'll see that I've got lots of handles on these clips, and I did this on purpose, because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back to my timeline. Let's just call this timeline, of course, probably enough, elephants. Okay. And let's again select it, right clip, right click, consolidate transcode. We're going to be on the transcode window, but this time we're going to do things a little bit different. You'll notice now that over here at the top of the transcode window, we now have a new option that's become available, which is to use the sequence to transcode the clips. Now, I'm not going to create a new sequence because I don't need to double up my sequences. But what we also have the ability to do now, what's important to keep in mind is that when we're transcoding our sequence, we're only transcoding that media specifically that has been used in our edit. But of course, we know that producers will come along and say, oh, can you add a you know, dissolve here, a wipe there? What we normally like to do is put handle lengths in there as well. And in this case, because we're working in a 2398 slash 24 frame per second project, we're going to give these shots two second handles. So now basically all I need to do is to say go. You're going to see that some of the clips don't match the frame rate. So what we should have done here is I'm just going to cancel here. Let's come back. Let's right click. Let's say consolidate transcode. Let's say keep the sources frame rate. We don't want to create a new sequence. We'll just call it sure high quality and we'll say transcode. Now what's going to happen is Media Composer is very quickly going to transcode these three clips. And if you compare the duration of them versus the duration of the originals, you'll see very different. Of course, again, because let's use uh, clip number one here, okay? I'm just gonna hit T on the keyboard. Now, of course, because we've now transcoded this, if we were to match frame this clip back, let's just call up my fast menu here. Let's come down to match frame. Let's go to find bin. You'll see that, of course, this clip in the timeline is now linked to that new piece of media that I just created and not the original AMA file. Now what's also important to keep in mind is that in my timeline, I'm only using five seconds and 10 frames of this clip. So the question is why is the clip itself nine seconds and 14 frames? Well, you'll remember that when we transcoded this clip, we added two second handles to either side. So two seconds and two seconds, which makes this clip of course now nine seconds long. Very, very cool. And also a great way to quickly get in and only transcode that media that you're using. You know, just in case you've got, you know, a hard drive that's running a little bit low on media space, you can use this method to only transcode just the exact amount of media you need to make sure you're not filling up that drive so you can leave space for other goodness, you know, like Media Composer renders or maybe even After Effects projects. Okay, now in our last lesson in our look at transcoding, we're going to talk about transcoding and working with larger than HD media because there's some important things in there that you're going to need to understand again so you don't you know get tripped up and you're going to make your transcoding process as smooth as possible. Now before I wrap up this lesson I want to thank our sponsor video guys and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase including G Technology Storage, software plugins and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.